Christ to write the book of the birth of Mary, Our Lady, Mother of the Holy Gods. There was a certain man from the twelve tribes of the children of Israel to whom the name of Eliakim of the line of David. He was very rich, and when he offered a sacrifice to the Lord, he did it twice. There was no one who would do like him from the children of Israel, for he reckoned with himself. He said, Let this be my sacrifice for all the children of Israel, that the Lord may forgive them all their transgressions. But when the feast of the Jews arrived, all the children of Israel offered their sacrifices, and one of them, whose name was Rabel, went to Eliakim and said to him, It is not proper for you to offer sacrifices before us, for there is no seed for you in Israel. And Eliakim, hearing these words, he was very sad and began to think within himself, thus saying, Behold, all the children of Israel have posterity and children, but I have not. And hence he thought of just and good men, namely, that they had descendants and children. Then he remembers our forefather Abraham. He considered him blessed that the Lord had given him a son, whom he called Isaac, in his old age. And he became sad, and said nothing to his wife about his sadness or about Rabel's words. And he departed and retired into the wilderness, fasting before the Lord for forty days and forty nights. For he had said in his mind, I will not put food into my body until the Lord has heard my prayer. Food and drink will be my request. Meanwhile, his wife began to weep and to sob. He prayed and invoked the Lord to give him a son and thus remove his reproach. And when the great festival had come, there was with Anna a certain woman from her ashes who said to her, How long will sadness be in your soul? Will you allow yourself to go up and torture yourself with this sadness? Behold, the day of the festival has come, therefore we should not mourn too much it suits you, but take this garment which my master gave me, and put on the same, for it is one of the royal garments, and it behooves thee to wear it. Anna answered, Depart from me, for not her. I wear it because of great illness, because I have no children. Who knows whether your lover has given you this dress? Wilt thou associate me with thee in thy sin? The woman answered and said to Anna, The Lord has indeed done well when he closed your womb so that you would not have a son or offspring among the children of Israel. When Anna heard these words, she was saddened with great sadness, and then quickly got up, took off her clothes, washed, and put on beautiful clothes. And when it was the ninth hour of the day, Anna went out into the temple to pray, and as she walked along the road, she saw a tall tree in which the birds were with their chicks, and then Anna said, Bless them, Lord, multiply them greatly, but listen to the prayer of my and my annual request. Bless me as you bless the womb of Sarah, to whom you gave a son in her old age. Erecting then, raising his eyes to heaven, he began to sob and weep, saying, But they have chicks, hey to me, to whom shall I be compared? Can I be compared with animals and beasts? But animals and beasts have young, hey to me, to whom shall I be compared? Can I be compared? When the earth? But the earth indeed has fruits. And while she weeps and she lamented looking up to heaven, suddenly an angel came down from heaven and stood before her and said, Behold now, the Lord heard your prayer and accepted your request. You are also pregnant. And Anna said, If ever my Lord and my God give me a son, I will give him to the Lord and put him in the temple of the Lord all the days of his life. And the angel said to him, Behold, your husband Eliakim is returning from the desert with a child. Take him and eat. Then the angel of the Lord went to Eliakim and said to him, Behold, the Lord has already heard your prayer and accepted your request, your wife Anna. She conceived, and when Eliakim had heard these words, he rejoiced. He gave great joy and thanks to the Lord God, and, pleading with the shepherds of his sheep, he said to them, Bring me two lambs and a sacrificial offering to the Lord my God. Twelve oxen also bring to the sacrifice in the temple of the Lord, and for the festival bring eight lambs for dinner. And they did as he had commanded them. And he brought Eliakim and the shepherds of his flock with him. 
But Anna got up and stood before the door of the house. With her husband, she saw her own coming towards her. She ran to him and embraced him. His neck and said to him, Don't you know that he is merciful and gracious, that the Lord presented himself to me? He blessed me with a great blessing, for that which was barren, from this time forth shall not be. Barren or such as has no children. And E. Yacom, having entered the house, rested that day. And rising on the morrow, he took the offering with him, and thinking on he said in his heart, If the Lord has really accepted the sacrifice from me, behold, I will see my face in the diadem that is found in the temple. For the diadem was placed upon the altar in the temple. When one of the sons of Israel was offering a sacrifice which God received, the face of him who had offered the sacrifice appeared as in a mirror. But if the sacrifice had not been accepted, his face would not have appeared in that diadem. When then Eacham had offered his sacrifice, he observed the vision of his face in the diadem and then said, Behold, now I know that the Lord he had mercy on me and heard my prayer and gave me a child. Then Eacham returned from the temple of God and went into the house with joy and exultation and praised and celebrated the Lord God. And when Anna was nine months old, she gave birth to a daughter and Anna said to the midwife, What has I given birth to? And she answered him, You have given birth to a daughter. And Anna then said, Today my soul glorifies the Lord, and she called the name of this daughter Mary. And at the end of forty days, Anna washed herself and put on a garment and gave her daughter a mother. But when the child was six months old, its mother set it down on the ground to test whether it could walk on its own two feet. And the child went seven paces on his feet and returned to his mother's lap. And Anna said, As the Lord lives, I swear that I will not allow this girl to walk on the earth until she enters the temple of the Lord. I will bring afterwards. He built a small dwelling for her, and he placed her in it until she was one year old. Then Eacham prepared a great banquet. He summoned the priests and elders of the children of Israel, their leaders and leaders to it, and he prepared a feast for all of them. Then to the priests Eacham, he brought his daughter, who all blessed him, saying thus, To him strength and courage and a great name for the ages. Of the century, Amen. And all the people said, Amen, Amen. Afterwards they brought her to the elders and leaders of the people and all. They blessed him by name and said, The Lord God of our fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, who dwells in heaven, bless this girl with the great blessing that comes from her, he will not go back. And his mother received her, and after she had brought her back to the cell which he had built for her, Anna said, I will sing to the Lord in a holy song, I will bless him and praise him. I will celebrate him and exalt him, because he took away from me reproach and disgrace, and gave me offspring among the children of Israel. When the feast was over, they arose and went home with joy and gladness, giving thanks to the God of Israel. When it was true, a girl two years old said to Yacom, Let us bring her in, the temple of the Lord according to the vow which we sent before, lest the Lord should be angry with us. Mother Anna answered, Wait until it will be his third year, so that he may not miss his father and his mother. At the end of the third year, he summoned Eacham the virgins of the Hebrews, and gave each of them a lamp. I lighted the candle, and all those who preceded Mary went, and I brought them in. They run her into the temple. The priest received her, and blessed her, saying, May the Lord glorify your name on that day when he comes from you, will appear. Afterwards the priests received her, and placed her on the third step of the temple, and the priests blessed them the princes, and all the children of Israel. And the Lord gave him great joy, he brought then her parents and family returned home, glorifying and praising the Lord God with great joy, that she had not turned back when they were taking her to this place. And Mary remained in the temple of the Lord like a pure dove, but every day an angel of the Lord sent down food to her from heaven. After Mary had reached the age of twelve, the nobles and wise men of the children of Israel gathered together, saying, Behold, Mary is now. Twelve years have been completed in the temple of the Lord, but we fear that they may not evil work here during the month. And then 
Then they went to the priest Zacharias and said to him, Go to the temple of the Lord and pray before the Lord your God to tell you what we should do about the girl. Listen to what God will tell you so that we can do it for him. Then Zacharias arose and entered into the secret place of the Holy of Holies, and lifting up his mind he prayed to the Lord, saying, My Lord and my God, my Helper and my Savior, I beg you, I beg you, tell me what we should do about this girl. And at that time the angel of the Lord came down from heaven and stood before Zacharias, saying, Zacharias, call together all the children of Israel, all men who have not married. Let each one bring a staff, and he on whose staff the mark appears, know that it is proper for him to receive the girl. Give her to this man, and make him her keeper. And when Zacharias the priest heard these words, he went outside from the temple, and for this matter, throughout the whole region of Judah. He sent a messenger. And when I heard this news, Joseph the carpenter from he threw the axe from his hands, and came into the temple with the other men. When they were assembled before Zacharias the priest, he placed the staffs he had received from them in the temple and prayed and lifted up his mind before the Lord. Having finished his speech, he took his staff with him and went outside. He brought them back and returned them to each one of them. The last rod that remained belonged to Joseph. But when Zacharias the priest, he was about to give it back to him, and behold, a dove came out of the rod on which it stood on Joseph's head. Then Zacharias said to him, You are the one whom the Lord chose and placed as guardian over that holy virgin. Take it from this hour and keep it. He answered, Joseph saying, Zechariah, how can I take her, for I am old and long-lived, but the girl herself has reached the age of marriage. If by chance I accept this, I will be a reproach among all the children of Israel. Zacharias the priest said to him, Take care, Joseph, lest the Lord be angry with you. Remember what he did to Korah and Dadham and Abarin, how open let the earth devour them alive, because they have transgressed and they did not want to listen to the commands of the Lord God. Now be careful, Joseph, that what happens to them does not happen there. And when Joseph heard these words, from the mouth of Zacharias, he was seized with great fear, and taking the girl to him, he said to her, Mary, behold, I am taking you from the temple of the Lord, but it is true that I must go on a journey, and now the time has come, but you now keep yourself until I return to you. I beg the Lord God to keep you and stay with you. Then the priests of the children of Israel were assembled to make a veil for the Lord's temple. And Zacharias the priest said to them, Bring me eight immaculate virgin daughters from the line of David. And they brought to him, as he had, commanded seven daughters, and the priest of Mary himself threatens me, for he knew that she was pure, and he fetched her. When Mary arrived, Zacharias commanded so that those virgins were present before him, and he said to them, Cast lots among yourselves, and whatever lot has been designated for the temple. Do not drink the purple wool of the Lord. And they did as he commanded them. A certain angel cast lots among themselves, and the lot fell on Mary. Then she took the purple wool and went back to her house. At that time the priest Zacharias became mute. The priest Samuel was appointed in his place, and from that time he performed the office of the priesthood until the angel of the Lord came down and untied the tongue of Zacharias. Then Mary began I had to bring down the wires. One day, when Mary went to draw water from the cistern, Nazareth in the city of David, behold, the Lord sent the angel Gabriel to her. And the angel said to her, Peace be upon you, O holy and pure Mary, for the Lord has blessed you. He is with you, and you have found favor with him. You will be exalted above all the women who have been created in the world. Hearing these things, Mary's words, she turned to the right and to the left, in order to see who was speaking to her, but she saw no one at all. Therefore she was seized with great fear, and leaving the jar she fled to the house and began to bring down the purple threads. But the angel of the Lord came again to her, saying, Do not be afraid, Mary, for behold, you have found favor with the Lord and great joy. 
but you are pregnant by the power of the word of the Lord and the Holy Spirit. Mary replied, saying, How can this happen to me, since I do not know my husband? And the angel said to her, You know, Mary, I will not give birth to you as women give birth, but the Holy Spirit will only come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. But he who is born of you is holy. He will be called the Son of the Most High, and his name will be Jesus. He will save his people from their sins. Mary answered and said to the angel, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord, my spirit is in his hands. He will do something about me. Will, and let it be done as you have told me. Then, when she had finished bringing down the purple threads, she brought the veil of Zacharias to the priest, who took it from her. He blessed her, saying, Mary, behold, the Lord will exalt your name, blessed one. For you are above all the other women who are in the world. And when Mary heard these words, she rejoiced with great joy and gave thanks to the Lord. Leaving Zacharias the priest, he went to the house of Elizabeth, his father's sister. And Elizabeth hearing Mary. When he came to himself, he proceeded to open the door of his house, and he asked Mary, and said, Where did this come to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? When I heard your voice when you greeted me, the child in my womb rejoiced with joy and exultation, and worshipped him who is in your bosom. Hearing these words from Elizabeth, Mary raised her eyes to heaven and said, Magnificat my soul to the Lord, and my spirit rejoiced in my God and my Savior, because he looked at the pain of his handmaid. Behold, at this time all generations will call me blessed, because he who is mighty has done great things for me and his holy name. And his mercy also extends from generation to generation to those who fear him. He made power in his arm and scattered those who exalted themselves in the mind of his heart. He brought down the mighty from their thrones and exalted them humble. He satisfied the hungry with his blessings and let the rich go. Empty Israel received his child and remembered his mercy, which he showed to our fathers, Abraham and his seed is, until the age. Then Mary remained three months with Elizabeth and went to her own house. After Joseph returned from his journey, he came to his house, and when he saw Mary pregnant, he struck his face, and put ashes on his head, and prostrated himself in the dust, and wept with a loud cry, saying, Who is it that seduced this daughter of David? Hate me, who is it that is waiting for him? Hate me, but what shall I do about the girl? What a virgin and pure woman I received from the temple! Hate to me who is it that conquered the virgin and corrupted her. Hate to me, behold, I will be a disgrace and disgrace among the children of Israel. Hate to me when the matter will be revealed before the priests and elders, and to the leaders of the people. Hate to me, for behold, he comes to the virgin. The cursed serpent that seduced her, just as the cursed serpent seduced Eve, when he made her eat from the tree of which the Lord had forbidden them to eat from it. And while thus mourning and lamenting, he arose from the dust, and calling Mary, said to her, O woman, why did you do this thing? Why are you sad? You have defiled your own soul. You have brought great reproach upon you and me, and disgrace and disgrace in the midst. The people? Have you forgotten the Lord your God? How not remembered? You are from your former dwelling in the Holy of Holies, when the angel of the Lord sent down food from heaven to you every day, you have forgotten how. Before your fathers you will grow in honor, justice, and holiness. Hearing these words, Mary wept with great tears, and opening her mouth, she said, Indeed, I have in no way done anything wrong. And Joseph said, What is this that is in your pocket? Mary answered and said, The Lord God knows no evil at all, that he had done me before the Lord, and had not defiled my flesh. And Joseph, hearing these words, thought within himself, saying, What? What will I do about this woman? But if I hide this matter, behold, I am guilty against the precepts of the law. To the children of Israel, I fear that what is in his bosom is of the Holy Spirit. Let it be, and I am the betrayer of the righteous blood. He also said, What? What will I do about her? 
Shall I leave her secretly or suffer her to remain with me? Then he got up and went to pray in the temple and prayed to God, raising his mind and saying, O Lord God, you who created all things and are the maker of all things, who you know all things, and nothing is hidden from you, and the hidden things have been revealed to you, Lord and my God. You know how. I had received a holy and pure virgin, and had done nothing impious towards her, but now I do not know what has become of her, but tell me what I shall do about that woman. And he prayed much with groans and tears, supplicating before the Lord, and when he had finished his prayer, he returned home and slept. But that night, the angel of the Lord appeared in Joseph's sleep and said to him, Do not be afraid, Joseph, to accept Mary. Then in the bay hers is from the Holy Spirit. Behold, she will give birth to a son, and his name will be called Jesus. He will deliver his people from their sins. Joseph therefore awoke from his sleep, rejoiced with great joy, glorifying and praising the Lord God of Israel. And afterwards there came to Joseph a certain priest, whose name was John. He greeted him and said, Why, Joseph, do not come by slowing down. Did you come to the temple with us? And he answered, I have made a journey, I arrived yesterday, I was tired from the journey, and therefore I want to rest for two days at my house. And while Joseph was talking like this, John turned to Mary, saw that she was pregnant, and went to Zacharias the priest, saying, Behold, Joseph, whom you call honest and faithful, has already committed a great crime. And Zacharias the priest said, What did he do? And John answered, He committed adultery with the virgin whom he had taken from the temple of the Lord, whose faithful guardian you had appointed him, and made her pregnant he made. And Zacharias answered him, Did Joseph do so? Send, said John, a messenger, ordering her to come to you, so that you will see and believe that she is pregnant. Then Zacharias the priest sent a message to the virgin, who came to him, and he saw that she was pregnant.